Hello YouTube and welcome to Talk Shit Monday. Monday. YouTube's favorite and most riveting show where we talk shit about products that piss me off. And today's candidate is the Epson ET2550 printer or more colloquially known as the EcoTank printer. Well, this is of course an older one. I think it's three or four years old at this point. I think we've had it for about three years now. The latest and greatest model is the ET2720, but that doesn't really matter. The concept is this. Uh, so you'll walk into a Staples and you'll see Shaquille O'Neal advertising these printers for you. And I think everyone can agree that seeing more Shaq in our lives is almost always a good thing. But with this one, I'm going to have to disagree with Shaq. I would not have endorsed this product, probably because he has never used one for an extended period of time anymore. The concept is simple. It's an inkjet printer, much like many others. Except this one has what they call the eco tank, which means the following. You can refill these with ink bottle. Ad nauseum. Do it as much as you like. And in theory, this could save you money because you're not buying an inkjet cartridge every time it's time to replace the ink. And inkjet printers have been around a long time. 20 years, 30 years, probably more as a technology. But we as the consumer, as far as I know, have only been putting up for 20, 30 years. That means for the last 30 years, we've also been putting up with bullshit like inkjet cartridges. So if there was ever any opportunity for a company to step in and be a hero and say, no more $30 inkjet cartridges. From now on, refillable tanks for everyone. Now's the time. I mean, we, we already know all the other problems with inkjet printers, like clogging nozzles, the, the shit's breaking, it printing dirty lines, it plain not working. We, we know that. We, can, as consumers, have come to know and expect that these stupid things eventually fail. In contrast, the Xerox printer behind me is a laser jet printer. And it's old. I mean, old. It's easily over t 10 years old. And it still prints. Wonderful. Knock on wood. My malfunction begins with the fact that this printer is now unusable for me. And here's why. One day, when trying to use the printer, a little notification popped up and said that the ink pad in the back needs replacing and that you cannot print until it is replaced. Now the ink pad in the back is just something that absorbs excess ink when it cleans the, the ink nozzles in the printer. So waste ink goes into this pad and gets absorbed. Eventually it becomes saturated and needs replacement. Sounds simple. You could probably order one off of Bizarro Chinese eBay for like 10 or 20 bucks. And the procedure to replace it is probably fairly straightforward. The problem is that even after you replace the said ink pad, you still have an error. It still says ink pad needs replacing. Aha, so all I really have to do is go to the software and erase the code that tells uh, the printer that the ink pad needs replacing. Except you can't do that. Epson has a software they give to customers. They also have their own uh, software that they give to their technicians. And the idea is this. According to Epson, they limit the lifetime of certain parts in the printer. They limit them by li their calculated lifespan and therefore they tell you it's for your own safety that they disable the printer for you. Now the way you fix it is you are supposed to take this whole fucking thing and send it to Epson for repairs. But in full disclosure, on Epson's own website, they say we understand that for some of our lower cost printers, such as probably this one, the cost of repairs doesn't make sense because we're talking shipping to and from the, the facility plus repair cost plus parts cost. You can see how these numbers could easily probably add up way over $100. And so, in their own words, they're basically implying that it might make more sense for you to just buy a new fucking printer. Let that sink in for a moment. Rather than let you repair 
a printer, which basically amounts to a $20 pad in the back, which I think any average person could do, they instead want you to go out to the store and spend two, three hundred dollars all over again instead of, instead of letting you repair the damn thing. Now, I have it on pretty good authority that this software has leaked its way onto the internet and people have used it. I've seen it on YouTube. You can g literally hook it, up to, hook it up to your computer and get the software and then if you're computer savvy enough, you can go through the trees and disable the code so that you can go back to using the printer. Now, I assume it's probably illegal for you to have the software if they didn't want you to have it. And even if you were to go out looking for it, there's probably a lot of bad actors out there who just want to give you a virus. So there's really not a hell of a lot of safe ways of you to repair this printer, which stinks. So in other words, the way maintenance on these printers works is it's not that the part is worn out, it's that the firmware internally to the printer or on your computer basically starts counting down from the moment you turn this printer on or based on the number of pages printed or a combination of the two. Once that timer runs out, a flag trips and now you can't use your fucking printer anymore. And you can't even fix it. It says most consumers who are out of warranty elect to replace a lower cost printer when they receive an end of life service message. Which is such complete bullshit. Like, you expect me to throw the printer away, throw it into the ocean. Now, I'm sure somewhere on this website, if I poke around long enough, I can find their statement about, Oh, we're going green. Oh, oh we even have a role to play in building better future. Oh, smallest light bulb. Oh, oh we gotta address climate change by chucking printers in the ocean. Oh. Now, I'm sure, of course, somewhere else on the website they say we want to, we want you to recycle your printers, but who the fuck has the time to do that? Just build a better product and then people don't have to keep buying the same old shit over and over again. It's that simple. And so, those are my thoughts on the EcoTank printer. I mean, we all know that companies build planned obsolescence into shit these days. That's just what we have to put up with as consumers. And I'm sure some pencil neck bean counter executive at Epson thought, shit, how do we make more money? Like, I need to keep exponentially increasing our profit margin. And then some dweeby engineer said, Sir, I think people have been asking for the ability to refill the printers for like two decades now. Maybe they'll buy more printers if we give that option. He said, that's a great idea, Johnson, but I have a better one. Install that feature, but then intentionally program the printer to blow itself up through software with internal counters and then force consumers to either pony up more money then the printer's worth in repairs, or throw it in the ocean <laughs> and just buy a new one. How about that? I'm a genius. Give me a $2 million raise. And that's all I have for you today, folks. Have you had a shitty experience with a product lately? Let me know in the comments below. And maybe next time I'll talk shit about your particular product. Print that like button and dump ink on that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Yeah! <laughs>